Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today we're going to talk about the eigenstates of the quantum harmonic oscillator in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. The energy of a quantum particle in a harmonic oscillator, as you know, is quantized. Today we're going to build the corresponding eigenstates, both in an abstract way in terms of creation operators, and also in a very concrete way in terms of wave functions. We will also look at their mathematical form, which is quite interesting, because these wave functions are the product of a Gaussian and a polynomial called a hermit polynomial. And we will also create some visualizations for these wave functions. So let's go! The Hamiltonian operator for the quantum harmonic oscillator is given by the kinetic energy, which is proportional to the momentum squared, plus the potential energy, which is proportional to the position squared. We can also rewrite this Hamiltonian in terms of the ladder operators, or in terms of the number operator. The eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian is this where E sub n are the energy eigenvalue and n the energy eigenstate. In the video on the eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator, we find that E n is given by this expression, where n can only take one of the values 0, 1, 2, and so on in integer steps. To understand what this means, we can draw the real axis, and we're now going to draw the allowed values of the energy on this axis. The lowest possible energy corresponds to n equals zero, and it is one half times h bar omega here. The fact that the lowest energy that the system can have is not zero is a feature of quantum particles and is radically different to the classical case, where a particle can be at rest in a harmonic potential with zero energy. This lowest energy is typically called the zero-point energy of the system. The next allowed value is for n equals 1, and it is 3 halves times h bar omega here. The next one is here, and so on. The allowed energy levels are separated by an energy h bar omega, which is called a quantum of energy. Let's make some room in the diagram. Something else we also learn in the video on the quantum harmonic oscillator eigenvalues is that the ladder operators allow us to move between energy eigenstates. In particular, the raising operator allows us to increase the energy by one quantum at a time, and the lowering allows us to go the other way. And finally, the number operator allows us to count how many energy quanta there are in the system above the zero point energy. Okay, so this was our quick refresher on the energy levels of the quantum harmonic oscillator, and for more details you should check the corresponding videos that are linked in the description. What I want to do today is to consider the eigenstates here. We'll see how we can construct them and calculate their explicit form in the position representation. That is, we'll calculate the wave functions of the harmonic oscillator that are associated with the allowed energy levels. OK, so let's start with some results that we obtained in the video on the ladder and number operators. The action of the raising operator A dagger on an energy eigenstate n is equal to the square root of n plus 1 times the eigenstate n plus 1. We therefore see that the action of the raising operator is simply to pick an eigenstate n of the system and then add a quantum of energy h bar omega to generate a new eigenstate of the system n plus 1. This relation is true for any n, and in particular it will be true for n minus 1, and it becomes this. We can now invert this equation to write the state n in terms of the state n minus 1. Again, this expression is valid for any n, so we can write the state n minus 1 in terms of the state n minus 2 like this. We can now pick this state n minus 1 and insert it into this expression. Doing this, we end up with the state n in terms of the state n minus 2. You can now imagine how we can continue doing this all the way to the ground state n equals 0, and we end up with this. We can simplify this expression by grouping the terms in the prefactor, 
to write the eigenstate n of the quantum harmonic oscillator as equal to 1 over square root of n factorial times a dagger to the power of n, acting on the ground state 0. Let's consider this expression for a moment. All it is saying is that to generate the eigenstate n, which is the eigenstate with n energy quanta above the ground state, we simply need to apply the raising operator n times on the ground state. But this makes perfect sense because each application of the raising operator adds an energy quantum, so if we want n energy quanta, we need to apply a dagger n times. The only role of this prefactor here is to ensure normalization. That is, if the ground state 0 is normalized, then the prefactor ensures that the eigenstate n is also normalized. So these are the energy eigenstates of the quantum harmonic oscillator. What we'll do in the rest of the video is to write down the wave functions associated with these eigenstates, which essentially means writing them down in the position representation. We'll use multiple results about the position representation of both states and operators, so if you're not familiar with them, make sure that you first check out the corresponding videos that are linked in the description. Let's start with the ground state. We know from the video on the energy eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator that when we act with the lowering operator on the ground state of the system, we get zero and we kill the state. We also know from the video on ladder operators that we can write the lowering operator in terms of the position and momentum operators, and doing so, we get this. So, this is the equation that we're going to work with, and we can immediately divide through by 1 over square root of 2 to remove this factor. What we want to do next is to rewrite this equation in the position representation. Again, you can find all the details in the corresponding videos linked in the description, but all we need to know is to remember that in the position representation, the position operator acting on a state psi gives x multiplying the corresponding wave function. And the momentum operator acting on a state psi gives ih bar times that derivative with respect to x of the wave function. Using these results, we can pick this equation up here, multiply it by square root of m omega over h bar, and we can rewrite it in the position representation like this. In this step, I've decided to call the ground state wave function psi zero. Feel free to stop here for a second to make sure that you are happy with this step. So this is our next task, to solve this differential equation to find an explicit form for the ground state wave function. This is a simple first order differential equation, so it's relatively easy to solve. We can first rearrange the equation to separate the variables. We can then integrate both sides with respect to x. The left hand side gives the logarithm of psi 0, and the right hand side gives this prefactor multiplying x squared, and then we have an integration constant c. Exponentiating, we find that the ground state wave function is equal to a times the exponential of minus m omega x squared over 2 h bar. This a constant here is simply e to the power of the original integration constant. So the ground state wave function of the harmonic oscillator is a Gaussian. As a quick aside, this result here also shows that the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator is non-degenerate, because the solution of a first order differential equation, like the one for psi zero, is unique. So all we have left to do is to determine the normalization constant a. To do so, we're going to insist that 1 is equal to the integral over all space of the wave function squared. We can next insert the form of the wave function that we just got. And at this stage, we're going to use this standard Gaussian integral. Integrals like this one are very common, and you can find them tabulated in most resources, including Wikipedia. So it's good to solve them directly at least once, but most of the time we just look them up when we need them, and this is exactly what I'm doing here. So using this result and realizing that this constant alpha in our case is given by this expression, we can now rewrite the integral as equal to this. And isolating the normalization constant, we get this. 
Finally, a is equal to this, where I've made a simple face choice to ensure that the normalization is real. And this is it. Our final expression for the ground state wave function of the system is given by this prefactor times this exponential. For now, we'll just leave this result as is and move on to calculate the eigenfunctions corresponding to other energy eigenvalues. But we'll come back to this wave function later in the video to explore its features in some more detail. Calculating the wave functions of the higher energy levels is conceptually straightforward. All we need to do is to use the result we derived earlier, relating the eigenstate n here with the ground state here. The raising operator can be written in terms of the position and momentum operators like this. And, just like we did earlier for the lowering operator, we can also rewrite it in the position representation. With this result, we can rewrite this equation up here in the position representation. We have that the eigenfunction corresponding to energy level n is equal to this prefactor. Then the raising operator in the position representation and we have to apply it n times. And all of this acting on the ground state eigenfunction. We just calculated what this ground state wave function is. So we can insert it here, and we get this long expression. All I've done is to insert the expression for psi zero and also extracted these factors of two here and here and group them here. So these are the energy eigenfunctions of the quantum harmonic oscillator. I haven't explicitly calculated them, but using this formula, we can calculate any eigenfunction that we're interested in for an arbitrary n. As an example, let's consider the first excited state for which n equals one. Using the general expression up here, we have this prefactor times this bracket, acting on the exponential. If we focus on this part for now, the first term is simply this factor times the exponential. And the second is this factor times the derivative of the exponential. We can rearrange this expression to this. Inserting it back into our full expression, we get this for the first excited state energy eigenfunction. We can of course repeat this exercise to get any excited state n, but as you can probably imagine, the maths becomes a little tedious. What we find is that each excited state n has the general form of a prefactor times a polynomial of order n times the Gaussian exponential. So from this expression, we can calculate any energy eigenfunction psi n of the quantum harmonic oscillator. This expression that we just derived can in fact be written in a number of alternative but mathematically equivalent ways. In the video on Hermit polynomials that is linked in the description, we show how to rewrite it in one of its most common forms. Here I'm just going to quote the answer, which is that psi n of x is equal to this prefactor, multiplying this function hn times this exponential. The hn functions are polynomials of order n called Hermit polynomials. We investigate some of the properties in the corresponding video, but the most important for our purposes now is that Hermit polynomials have definite parity according to this relation. If we look back at the energy eigenstates, then we see that they are the product of one of these Hermit polynomials and a Gaussian. As the Gaussian is an even function, then the energy eigenfunctions have the same parity as that of the Hermit polynomials, which essentially means that for even n, we have even states, and for odd n, we have odd states. Now, we could have expected this result because the Hamiltonian operator of the quantum harmonic oscillator commutes with the parity operator, which means that the Hamiltonian is an even operator. We then know from the video on even and odd operators 
that the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian must also be eigenstates of the parity operator, which means that they must have definite parity as we've just confirmed. Overall, we can use this expression at the top or this expression here in terms of Hermit polynomials to construct an arbitrary energy eigenfunction. What we'll do to finish is to plot some of these eigenfunctions to see what they look like. The diagram on the left shows the ground state wave function. I want to focus on the shape of the wave function, so I'll be using arbitrary units and I have not included specific values on the axes. As we determined earlier in this video, the ground state is proportional to a Gaussian function and as such it is an even function. The diagram on the right shows the absolute value squared of the wave function a quantity that gives the probability density of the particle position, so that in the ground state the particle is most likely to be found at the centre of the harmonic potential. This next diagram on the left is the first excited state wave function. We also determined it earlier in this video, and it is a Gaussian multiplied by x, so overall it is an odd function. In the right diagram, we see that the probability of finding the particle at the centre of the harmonic potential is zero, while the particle is most likely to be found at this point or this other point. This on the left is the second excited state, which is an even function as expected. The probability density on the right now has three peaks, with the central one being smaller than the side ones. And here I have again the ground state, first excited state and second excited state in the first row, and in the second row I have added three more excited states. As you can see, when we increase the value of n, we get more zeros in our wave function, because it is given by a polynomial of increasing order. You can also see pictorially the parity properties of each wave function. The corresponding absolute value squared wave functions behave as you would expect, as shown here. And finally, here I have the wave function and its absolute value squared for a very large value of n, in this case n equals 60. You can see that the probability density approaches a limit in which the particle is most likely to be found at the extremes of the harmonic potential here and here and least likely to be found at the centre of the potential here. This result is consistent with the classical limit in the sense that the extrema of the potential are the turning points of a classical particle undergoing harmonic motion where it is momentarily at rest, so it spends a large fraction of its time there. And by contrast, the centre is where the classical particle is moving really fast, so it spends a small fraction of its time there. The eigenstates of the quantum harmonic oscillator are the building blocks to study a wide range of quantum systems. Their mathematical form is rather involved, but at the same time they have some rather interesting properties. For example, the wave functions are even or odd, which reflects the inversion symmetry of the potential. As a next step, you can learn more about the mathematical form of these wave functions by checking out our video on Hermit polynomials. Or you can learn more about the behaviour of particles in the quantum harmonic oscillator by checking out our video on coherent states. And as always, if you liked the video, please subscribe.